So what we're going to look at now is the uh, Boscastle Flood 2004. It's a little update to the video that was originally on this um, due to some extra management strategies that we've incorporated into our case study. The great thing about Boscastle is that it works, uh, basically kills two birds with one stone. It's an example of an extreme weather event in the UK, but also an example of a river flood and the management strategies put in place in response to that. So we're going to start looking at the causes okay, of, the, of the Boscastle floods back in August, 16th of August 2004. Uh, we'll do those in red pens, so they stand out quite clearly. Firstly, like most floods, the primary cause is an extremely high amount of rainfall. Okay. In the space of 24 hours, 200 millimetres of rainfall fell from a cloud base that was over 40,000 feet high. What we're talking about there is we're talking about probably sort of two times, three times the annual, um, sorry, the monthly rainfall of August uh, falling just in 24 hours. Obviously, that intense rainfall is going to saturate the ground. Okay, uh, It's therefore going to prevent infiltration, which increases surface runoff, which increases the speed at which water enters the river, making it more likely to flood. That speed at which the water entered the river was helped by several other factors. Firstly, the valleys surrounding Boscastle were incredibly steep, again, encouraging surface runoff. Humans had added to that okay, by deforesting the river valley, reducing the amount of interception uh, that was occurring. Therefore, any rainfall that did infiltrate into the soil was flowing quite quickly as through flow into the river and not being intercepted by the roots of the trees. On top of that, Boscastle sits on the confluence of three rivers, okay, uh, the Paradise, the Jordan and the Valency. All of those rivers, obviously at that point, having peak discharge combining together just above Boscastle, basically meant that flood waters were inevitable. Humans again hadn't helped the issue by creating a large car park for visitors, Boscastle River, a big tourist destination just above the village. The only problem with this was it was made out of an impermeable tarmac surface, again encouraging high rates of surface runoff. So if we look at the impacts of the Boscastle floods then, we can basically break those down into social, economic and environmental impacts. Now, socially, uh, you know, we were actually very, very fortunate in Boscastle. There was no deaths. Due to the quick and uh, very highly effective emergency response uh, sort of directed by the British military and the British Coast Guard, uh, people were airlifted to safety before any deaths could occur. And we do, however, of course, always see people, for example, suffering post-traumatic stress disorder and a certain degree of social displacement as people are forced to leave the area because their homes, business is destroyed and they simply can't afford to repair them or simply because they no longer want to live in the village due to the memory of what happened. Economically, what we saw was a total damage cost of around £15 million. This was added to by the fact that over 68 homes were flooded and that results in a massive increase in insurance premiums. Environmentally, what we saw was large amounts of bank erosion, destroying bank habitat. Uh, lots of trees along the banks of the River Valency were pulled into the floodwaters, and we saw a massive uh, sort of environmental damage from that. But probably the most significant environmental damage was the number of cars that were washed into the harbour at the bottom of the river and the bottom of the valley just below Boscastle. Over 32 cars were washed into the harbour. Many of them uh, took several years to re uh, retrieve. Obviously, that is going to cause serious amounts of environmental damage, particularly due to uh, things like oil and petrol leaking out into the water and causing high amounts of pollution. Finally, looking at the management then, let's initially look at some of the short-term responses to this. Okay. The Met Office had a traffic light warning system. Okay. Depending on the severity of the light given, red, amber, green, so on, uh, indicated the level of threat uh, posed to villagers. Okay, and uh, as the sort of storm went on, that 200 millimetres of rainfall, okay, the Met Office were releasing regular updates on the danger posed until it got to a severe flood warning. This was disseminated, this information was shared, obviously via the Met Office's own website, but also social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter. That gave people a warning and definitely helped in preventing the loss of lives as people were able to evacuate and leave their, their homes. 
What we also saw okay, in the more long term was a degree of afforestation in the river valley. Trees that had been removed to make room for farmland, etc., were replanted. The idea here to increase the amount of interception, therefore reducing uh, the rate at which water enters the river during uh, periods of heavy rainfall. There has to be some consideration of the disadvantage of this, however. Many farmers in the local area were not happy about this because obviously it meant a loss of their farmland that they'd previously gained from deforestation, and obviously that's a loss of income for them. We also actually saw some more deforestation, which seems counterintuitive when we say that deforestation is a cause of flooding. But one of the major problems in Boscastle was that the trees that were uh, collapsed into the river due to the bank erosion got jammed under the low and narrow bridges of the of the village. And that actually caused like dams to form and actually probably caused the river to flood even larger than it would have done. What we also saw was the removal of that impermeable car park that we talked about. A new space was created, a uh, new car park was created with over 500 spaces but made out of a permeable gravel surface. This was highly effective, increasing infiltration, reducing surface runoff but maintaining a place for tourists to park easily and visit the village and therefore keep the economic uh, success of the village. That was obviously highly important for it to be able to rebuild. One of the biggest things that they did was to deepen and narrow, uh, sorry, deepen and widen the river. Okay? They deepened it by around 0.75 metres and widened it by 3 metres. The idea here would be that they would increase the channel's capacity, allowing it to hold more discharge without the risk of flooding. They also did this in a highly effective way because there were major concerns that uh, it would create an unnatural look to the river. So what they did was they used reclaimed stones from buildings that had been destroyed and from the local area to uh, build these new deeper and wider banks so that it kept that kind of attractive appearance, which was so important for Boscastle to get its tourists back. Again, though we do need to consider the negatives, some of this building work did take over two years and some local businesses claimed that actually they would have survived the damages uh, of the flood but could not get the income due to the disturbance the building work caused. In addition to this, they built storm drains to direct water immediately away from the village. Finally, what they also did, uh, upstream of Boss Castle, they braided the river channel. This means they split it into several smaller channels which flow, which were shallow and therefore flow more slowly. The idea behind this being that deposition would then occur upstream of Boscastle, not actually in the channel that goes through the village. As a result of that, the channel wouldn't come stilted up and it would be able to maintain that deep and wide channel to hold the capacity of the river. In what they realised after the initial flood was that the channel had actually become stilted up and was actually able to hold very little water because uh, much of the channel was full of dip, uh, deposited material. This braining actually not only has prevented that happening, so therefore reducing the chance of flooding, but it's also acted as a salmon spawning ground, so it's had a, sort of a, a side effect, a really positive environmental side effect. In terms of... In terms of this idea of making it uh, slower upstream, the only concern is, of course, that then when the water starts flowing much more quickly through the deepened and widened part of the channel, that you could cause a problem downstream. However, as Boscastle is the last last village uh, before the river meets the sea, this isn't really too much of a problem. What success this has had is that this flood defences now mean that Boscastle is able to protect itself against a one in 400 year event. Considering the fact that the Flood defend, the flood that did occur was a 1 in 50 year event. The fact that it is now capable of protecting itself against a 1 in 400 year event suggests that overall the strategies have been highly successful.